friends, and welcome back to my channel. Today, I am going to show you how to make a crocheted tote bag. So I've already made one of the pieces for the tote bag. I was just sort of playing around with my yarn and it turned into this, which is the shape that you need to make such a bag. Before we jump in though, let's talk about what you're going to need to make this little crossbody tote bag. You're going to need a crochet hook, I'll be using a 3.5 millimeter hook today. You'll also need a pair of scissors and some stitch markers if you've got them, as well as a yarn needle. And of course, you're going to need some yarn. I am going to be using these naturally dyed yarns today. I dyed all three of these yarns with onion skins. If you wanna see how I did that, I will link those tutorials in the description down below, but that's not what we're focusing on today. I just wanted to mention it because these colors are just so interesting to have all come from one ingredient. Just dried yellow onion skins. So gather your supplies and let's get started. We're going to begin with a nice long tail because we're gonna use this tail to sew up the side seam later. Then we're gonna start with a slip knot. After that, chain 41. One, two, three, forty and 41. From here, we're going to single crochet in the second chain from the hook, one and two. We'll single crochet in that stitch. And then we're going to single crochet in each chain all the way down the row. At the end of this row, you should end up with 40 stitches in your row. That last 41 from the original chain is going to make up the first stitch in the row. At the end of this first row, chain one and turn. And here I am at the last stitch of the row. I'll finish my single crochet, chain one, and turn. And now for row number two, we're gonna begin with a single crochet in the first stitch of the row, and then chain one. Now I'm gonna skip that next stitch, and then in the following stitch, I'm gonna do a single crochet. After the single crochet, chain one, then we're gonna skip the next stitch, and then we're gonna single crochet into the following stitch. Chain one, skip the next stitch, single crochet into the following stitch. Chain one, skip the next stitch, single crochet into the following stitch. And I am going to repeat that all the way across the row. I'm gonna just zoom through this and I will see you at the end of row number two. All right, here I am at the end of row number two. So I will pull back just to show you how the row is ending. So I have my last few stitches here, single crochet, and then I did a chain one, we'll skip one, we'll put a single crochet in the next stitch. And if you did the same number of stitches that I did, you're gonna end up with just one stitch at the end of the row here. So we won't chain one, we're just gonna put a single crochet into that last stitch. So here at the end of the row, we have two single crochets next to each other. Then I'm gonna chain one and turn, and now we're working on row number three. So I'm gonna start row number three with a single crochet into the first stitch, and then I'm gonna chain one, and now that stitch at the end of the row here, how there were two single crochets, that makes a spot for us to skip. So we chain one, skip one, and now we single crochet into the chain one space from the previous row. Then we're gonna chain one, and now we don't skip one the same way anymore. Technically we are still skipping one, but it's easier to just think of it as put your single crochets into that chain one space. So I'll chain one, after my single crochet, and then I'm gonna single crochet into that next chain one space. And we're just gonna be single crocheting only into the space left by that chain one all the way across the row. This is called the linen stitch. It makes for a really pretty sort of look to the stitch after a few rows, you'll see. But we're going to just single crochet in each of those chain one spaces and then chain one in between our single crochets all the way across. And then at the end of row number three, we're gonna chain one and turn. Here I am at the end of row number three. And again, I'm finishing with a single crochet and then there's one stitch left after that. So instead of doing a chain one, we're just going to finish with a second single crochet. So the rows are going to be ending that way always with two single crochets at the end. Then I'm gonna chain one, 
and turn. And you can start to see how that stitch sort of makes for a different look. For row number four, it's gonna be the same as row number three. So we're gonna start with a single crochet in the first stitch of the row, then chain one, skip one, and single crochet into the chain one space. Then chain one, skip one, and single crochet into the next chain one space. And I'm just going to repeat that all the way across for row number four. Now for row number four, all the way up to row number 12, we're going to be doing the exact same repeat in the yellow yarn. So when I finish row number 12, I'll come back here and show you what we're gonna do next, but I'm just going to zoom through this part because it is just the exact same repeat in this beautiful yellow yarn. See you at the end of row number 12. Here I am at the end of row number 12. I am going to change colors at this point. Isn't that just beautiful? Okay, so I'm going to switch into this sort of army green color, but I'm not going to disconnect my yellow yarn because we're going to do a little bit of color work. So for the last stitch of the row, I'll begin my single crochet by inserting my hook, and then I'll yarn over and pull up a loop with my yellow yarn, and then with both yarn colors, I'm going to yarn over, and then I'm going to pull through with both yarns on my hook. Now I'll drop the yellow yarn, and I'll drop the tail from the army green yarn, and I'm going to chain one with just the army green yarn, and then I'll turn. Now for rows number 13 and 14, I'm gonna be doing the exact same stitch repeat, but I'm going to do that in this green color. I'm gonna leave the yellow tail behind, but I'm gonna carry along the green tail with me so that the green tail gets woven in as we go, but we want the yellow one to be left there because we're gonna switch back to the yellow in a few rows, so. I'm going to continue that repeat for two rows in the army green and I will see you at the end of row number 13. And here I am coming up to the end of row number 14. I'm going to switch back to the yellow at the end of this row and I'm gonna do that the same way that I switched into that army green. So I'm gonna do my last stitch. I'm gonna insert the hook, pull up a loop in the brown yarn. Then I'm going to finish my stitch with both yarns, and then I'll do my chain one just with the yellow, and then turn. And now I'm going to leave behind that army green yarn, and I'm gonna do another two rows. So rows number 15 and 16, I'm going to do in the yellow yarn, and I'll meet you back here at the end of row number 16. Here I am at the end of row number 16. I'm gonna start my stitch with the yellow yarn. I'm gonna drop the yellow after finishing the stitch with both colors. I'm gonna switch back to the brown army green for my chain one. So now for rows 17, 18, 19, and 20, I'm gonna go ahead and keep going in this army green color. So four more rows in this army green, and then we're gonna switch colors again. And here I am at the end of row number 20. I'm gonna switch back into the yellow yarn one more time, and I'm gonna just chain one with the yellow, turn around, and for rows number 21 and 22, I am going to do the exact same repeat of the same stitch, but with the yellow yarn. I'll see you at the end of row number 22. Here I am at the end of row number 22, and I'm going to, on my last stitch, I'm gonna finish the stitch with both yarn colors. And now we're actually done with the yellow for this whole bag, basically. So I'm going to trim off the yellow at this point. I'll leave a little tail and then we can just get rid of that. And now I'm going to do another two rows so row number 23 and row number 24, I'm going to do in this army green, and then we're gonna be switching to a brand new color. So I'm just going to zip through rows number 22 and 23 in this color, and then I will meet you back at the end of this row to show you what we're doing next. Here I am at the end of row number 24. I am going to now switch into the even darker brown. So I'm going to start the last stitch with the old color, 
Then I'm gonna incorporate the new color and we're gonna go through with both for that last stitch. And then I'm gonna drop the old color and chain one and turn just with the new color. Now for rows number 25 and 26, I'm gonna repeat the exact same stitch pattern, but this time I'm going to do it with the dark brown yarn. I'm going to leave the army green yarn behind and just work in that dark brown. So now for rows number 25 and 26, I'm just going to repeat the exact same stitch repeat in the dark brown. See at the end of row number 26. And here I am at the end of row number 26. I'm gonna finish with a single crochet with both of the colors. And then I'm going to switch back to the army green again for my chain one and then I'm gonna turn around. And now for rows number 27 and 28, I'm gonna do the same stitch repeat, but again in the army green color. I'll see you at the end of row number 28. And here I am at the end of row number 28. I'm gonna finish my row with both colors again and I'm gonna switch back into the darkest color for my chain one. I'm gonna turn it around. Now for rows number 29, 30, 31, and 32, I'm gonna repeat the same stitch repeat, but this time in my dark color. So I'm gonna zip through this and I'll see you at the end of row number 32. Here I am at the end of row number 32. I'm going to finish my last stitch with both colors and then I am going to chain one just with my army green and I'm gonna drop that dark brown. Now for rows number 33, 34, 35, and 36, I am going to complete the exact same repeat stitch, but just in the army green. I'll see you at the end of row number 36. And here I am at the end of row number 36. I'm going to finish with both colors. And then I'm going to drop the army green now and I'm actually gonna trim my yarn here. And I'm going to do my chain one with the very dark brown. Now for rows number 37 and 38, I'm going to be doing the exact same repeat with the very dark brown. I'm going to crochet over the army green end so I don't have anything to weave in later, but otherwise it's the same thing we've been doing just for another two more rows. So I'll see you at the end of row number 38. Here I am at the end of row number 38. I'm gonna finish my single crochet and then I'm not gonna chain one here. For row number 39, we're going to be doing a little bit of stitch marking first. I'm gonna take two stitch markers and I'm going to mark seven stitches from each side. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. For row number 39, I'm going to begin by slip stitching in the first seven stitches. So there's one, two, three, and seven. Now I'm going to single crochet in the seventh stitch where we just did our slip stitch. So we just slip stitched into the seventh stitch. Now I'm going to single crochet into that exact same stitch just like that. And then we're going to continue following the repeat that we've been doing. So we've got a single crochet right now in a chain one space. So I'm going to chain one and then single crochet into the next chain one space. And then chain one, single crochet into the next chain one space. And I'm going to do that repeat all the way until I reach the second stitch marker. And here I am at the next stitch marker here. And we're gonna finish this row like we finish all of the other rows. So we've got a single crochet we're finishing with and we're gonna do one more single crochet and we'll do that into the stitch with the stitch marker and then chain one and turn. And for row number 40, we're going to do the same thing we've been doing for our rows up to this point. So between the new, uh, the new stitch marker, so this new shorter row, we're gonna start with a single crochet and then chain one, single crochet into the chain one space, then chain one, single crochet into the chain one space. We're just gonna continue that repeat all the way across back to the beginning of the row for row number 40. And here I am at the end of row number 40. I'll finish with a single crochet and then there's one stitch left. 
So I'll do my final single crochet at the end there and then chain one and turn. And now we have this shorter row that we're gonna be working. And we're gonna do four more rows in this exact same way. So rows number 41, 42, 43, and 44, we're just going to be working in the dark yarn with the same repeat between those two points. So I'm gonna zoom through this part and I will see you at the end of row number 44. All right. And that is what it's looking like now. This is so cute. It looks like a little bumblebee, don't you think? It's gonna be such a cute bag. So for this part, the next thing you have to do is make a second one. Once you have two of them, that's gonna make up the bag. This one I've already blocked, the one that we just made now, I still have to block it. So you can see the one that's been blocked is nice and flat and perfect in size. But once I block this second one, this is going to be our bag. This is gonna stitch down together like this and it'll be a really cute tote bag. But after you make these two things, you've gotta make a strap. So let me just finish this piece here by cutting off a tail and weaving in that end. And then let's get into the straps of the bag. I wanna use the dark brown yarn for the strap. And to begin the strap, I am going to do a slip knot. Then I am going to do a chain of 12. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Then I'm going to single crochet in the second chain from the hook, one and two. And then I'm going to single crochet across. At the end of the row, chain one and turn. There I am at the end of the row. I'll just chain one and turn the work around. And now you can see we've got this roughly two inch wide little row. This short row has 11 stitches in it and we're going to keep making single crochet rows, one on top of the other, one on top of the other, until you get to row number 200. If you want a bag that has a shorter strap, you go as long as you want to, but for mine, I want it to be a nice long crossbody bag. So 200 rows is gonna be how many rows I am going to go for this one. And it takes a little while, but this is a great mindless task. So it's awesome for when you're watching a movie or something. So I'll see you at the end of my 200 rows. Then it's going to be time to figure out what we do next. All right, it's a little bit later now and I have finished my strap. This measures about two inches by about five feet long. It's a very long strap and it's going to be perfect for a nice crossbody bag. This has been blocked already. I steamed it on my iron while pulling it so you can see it's a little bit gappy, but I think it looks very cute. So let's jump into the assembly. Maybe we should start with the bottom seam. I think that's a good spot to start. Oh, doesn't this look like a little bumblebee? So pretty. So I'm gonna line up my sides and I think I'm even gonna stitch mark them together at like strategic points so that I know what I'm doing. All right, so now that this is attached together like this, I am going to flip it on itself like that. And then I'm going to use the long tail that I put aside originally as my sewing yarn. All right, so I'm gonna use that long tail and I am going to do some blanket stitches to put together this bottom seam. I'm gonna insert the needle through both pieces of fabric from bottom up to top and there'll be a loop that's left behind. I'm gonna pass the needle through that loop and draw the stitch tight. And then I'll move on to the second stitch in both pieces of fabric, insert the hook from bottom to top Pull the needle through the loop that's left behind, pass the needle down through that, and draw the stitch closed. And that's a blanket stitch. And I'll insert the needle bottom to top through the next stitch, and then I'll pass the needle down through the remaining loop, drawing it tight closed. And I'm going to repeat that all the way across the bottom of the work here. And I'm just gonna make sure those stitches are nice and tight and very strong and secure. And I'm just gonna put one blanket stitch in each stitch across. Here I am at the last stitch of the bottom assembly portion. And if you have a look, that seam is now just lovely. 
nice and snug. And from the outside, it's gonna be a nice, perfect, clean seam. I think maybe I'll press that right now just to press it out a little bit flat. Before I press that seam though, I am going to just, uh, with my yarn needle, weave around with the end, just back and forth through the work that we just did, just to weave in that end and get rid of that tail. And once the end's woven in, I'll clip my yarn, then I'm gonna press this thing flat and then it's gonna be time to do up the side seams. It looks so nice now that I pressed it. It looks so pretty and so perfect. Uh, don't press your knitwork or your crochet if your yarn is made of acrylic because that's plastic and it'll melt. But this is wool, uh, so it pressed really beautifully. I just sort of steamed it for a second under my iron. And now it's time for us to do up the side seams. We're gonna be doing something pretty similar for the side seams, well, identical really. We're gonna be putting them together with a blanket stitch, but we're gonna do it in the, should we do it in the yellow yarn? I wonder. It'll show up down here, so I'm a little nervous about that. I feel like it might be better to do it in the army green. Let's do the army green. So I've stitch markered together my side seams. Since we did a bunch of different stripes though, it's gonna be pretty easy to see how to line this up when we're stitching it together. I've got my yarn needle here loaded up with the army green yarn. I'm just gonna take a nice long length of it. And I'm going to begin at the bottom corner here. So I'm going to insert the needle where I've got my first stitch marker placed, which is the very first corner stitch. And I'm just gonna secure that stitch with a little knot. From here, I'm just going to do blanket stitches, one in each row all the way up. I'm gonna try my best to cover those tails, but if I can't get them to behave, I'll just weave them in at the end. So I'm gonna do up the whole side the exact same way, one blanket stitch, in each row instead of one blanket stitch in each stitch, all the way up the side of the work. Now I'm gonna do the other side. All right, the side seams are done up. Look how cute this is looking. So this is gonna be a perfect size for just like a little carry bag in the summertime. I think it's gonna look so cute. It looks like a little like woven basket, don't you think? Okay, so I'm gonna put it back inside out because we have to do up these bottom holes at the bottom to make it a little bit more of a square shape. So I'm gonna load up my sewing needle one more time with the, actually this time I'll use the dark yarn. All right, and I'm gonna take the bag and you can see how the little side seams, here's the bottom, here's the side. So I'm going to grab the front piece of fabric and then I'm gonna grab the back piece of fabric and I'm gonna pull those until the side seam and the bottom seam are right in the middle. And you'll see that'll flatten out that side seam. Here's the, the hole. And now we're going to stitch this hole closed horizontally, just like this. So I'm going to do the same blanket stitch that I did for the side seams and the bottom seam. And I'm gonna do everything exactly the same, just along this side little corner bottom. All right, both of those bottom Seams are now closed up, so I can turn the bag right side out, and then we can push those seams as far as they'll go. And now the bottom of the bag is a square. Instead of it just being a rectangle for a bag, it's actually like a rectangular prism. Look at how cute this is. I kind of want to make like little handles, like a like a basket because of how cute it is, but I still want it to be a crossbody bag. Okay, now we have to figure out the straps. All right, so I've decided even though it's going to physically take a while to do, I'm going to fold this strap over and I'm gonna blanket stitch down this end and then I'm gonna blanket stitch down this end and I'm gonna do it in the yellow yarn so that there's like a yellow flash to this. Um, I don't know if I should do it with two strands of yarn. Probably I should, but I'm gonna need a lot of yarn to do it. So this is gonna take me a while. I'm not gonna explain it because it's gonna take me probably way too long to do. I'm gonna cut a long piece of yarn and then I'm gonna blanket stitch all the way down one side to put this together. And then I'll blanket stitch up the other side to make it look the same on both sides. And then it'll be a flat strap, but that flat strap will be 
kind of fancy. All right, so it's a while later now. I've finished the straps. I ironed them again with the steam on, and now they are these beautiful thick straps that are outlined in the bright yellow yarn. And it's time to put the straps onto the bag. I've played around with it a little bit, and I think this is what I've come up with where I want the strap to finish. I've sort of pinned it down at this bottom area or just to the first dark brown line. I think what I like is having the stripe here because I think it adds to the bumblebee vibe. Um, so we're going to stitch this down, but before we do anything like decorative with the yarn to stitch it down, I wanna stitch it down with something strong. So I got this embroidery floss. It's like glittery gold, and I thought it would be a fun thing to stitch it down with because it would add a little sparkle like a bumblebee wing. So I also have a different needle for this. I'm gonna be using a sewing needle because I'm using embroidery floss. So I'm going to try it with all six strands of floss first. All right, so there is the first strap stitched on. Strong and cute. And with that gold floss, I think we'll end up with a nice final product. And now I'm gonna do the same thing to the other side. All right, sorry about the crappy lighting, it's nighttime now. But I finished sewing on the straps and I did some nice lines with that gold thread. And now the base of the bag is actually finished. And if you want just a simple tote bag, you can be done right here. But I think I want to do a little bit more. I think I want to add some kind of closure and maybe a little bit more decoration. But that will have to wait till tomorrow. So see you then. All right, so here's what's up. It's been a couple of days and on my last live stream, I added some bronze embroidery floss to the bag and I think that makes a pretty good difference. I feel like it's got a good vibe now. We've got to come up with a top for the bag. Uh, the live stream suggested a drawstring, but I think I kind of want to do a flap over the front. I like bags that have a little bit of a, an overhang over the top. So I'm thinking I'm going to connect my yarn right at the sides uh, where the straps attach. And then we're just gonna go back and forth a few rows and then we'll reduce it after that to make a little sort of flap for the top. So if you hear bells jingling, it's because the cat is playing with a toy. So just bear with me. So first, I'm gonna take my crochet hook and I'm going to grab the first stitch right next to the strap. Let me zoom you in. And I'm going to, I think I'll go with the yellow yarn because I feel like we could use more of it. It's pretty. I'm gonna pull up a loop and then I'll drop that tail and I'm gonna chain one. Now I'm going to single crochet across the top of the project and I'm going to cover up the tail with my single crochets. And at the end, when I get to the other strap, I'm gonna chain one and turn. So I'll just zoom through this single crochet row and I'll see you at the end of the row. Also, did I show this? The straps are done. I think I showed it. All right, I'm at the end of the row now or at the end of my new row. I'm just about at the last stitch here. So I'm gonna put one more stitch right where the strap attaches and then I'm gonna chain one and turn. And now we're gonna resume the pattern that we had been doing for all of the, um, the body of the bag. So for that, I'm going to do a single crochet in the first stitch, then I'm gonna chain one, skip a stitch, single crochet in the next stitch, chain one, skip a stitch, single crochet in the next stitch. And I'm just gonna repeat that all the way across. And when I get to the end of the row, I'll meet you there. Here I am back at the end of the row. I did a single crochet and now the last stitch of the row will be another single crochet. Then I'll chain one and turn. And we're going to call that row two of the flap. So now for row number three, four, five, and six, I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to single crochet, chain one, skip one, single crochet into the chain one space, chain one, single crochet into the chain one space. And I'm gonna just repeat that all the way up to row number six. And at the end of row number six, we're gonna be doing something a little bit different. So I'm just gonna zoom through this part 
And when I get to the end of row number six, I'll come back here and I'll show you what we'll do next. So I've just finished my six rows and now I am going to be doing something to sort of help curve the flap over the bag. So at this point, the flap can reach across the width of the bag, see? So now we want it to curve over the front of the bag. So to make it curve over the front of the bag, I am going to do some, hmm, what am I gonna do, front loops or back loops? I think I'm gonna do back loops only. So I'm going to do a row of single crochets. So I'll do the first one, just a regular single crochet. And now for row number seven, I'm going to just single crochet through the back loops only. Through all of the stitches, I'm gonna go through the back loops only. That's gonna help curve this flap downward. And here I am at the last stitch of the row. I'm gonna single crochet through both loops normally and then chain one and turn. And you can see now by doing back loops only, we've kind of created a little curve here. Now for rows number eight, all the way up to row number 15, we're gonna go back and do the exact same repeat uh, from the other rows. So we're gonna do single crochet in the first stitch, chain one, skip one, single crochet in the stitch, chain one, skip one, single crochet. And we're gonna repeat that all the way across, all the way up to row number 15. I'm gonna zoom through this because again, it's just a repeat of the same thing from here. Here I am at the end of row number 15. I'm gonna finish with a single crochet through the last stitch and then chain one and turn. You can see the little groove from doing that one row of back loops only, the little flap curves over the front of the bag. Oh, that is looking so cute. Okay, so now for row number 16, we're gonna start doing some decreases now. We're gonna start sort of tapering the flap down a little bit. So to do that, I'm going to insert my hook into the first stitch of the row and pull up a loop, then into the second stitch of the row and pull up a loop, then yarn over and pull through all three loops on the row, single crochet two together. Then I'm going to single crochet into the chain one space and then chain one and then resume the pattern, just single crochet into each of the chain one spaces. All right, here I am at the end of the row. I'm going to do my last chain one. And now for this last two stitches, I'm going to insert into that chain one space and pull up a loop and then insert into the last stitch of the row and pull up a loop and then yarn over and pull through all three loops. Then I'm gonna chain one and turn. Now for row number 17, we're gonna start with a decrease again. So I'm going to do insert the first stitch, pull up a loop, insert into the second stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through all three loops. Then I'm gonna chain one, skip that stitch, and then single crochet into the chain one space. And I'm going to repeat that same pattern all the way across until we get to the end of the row. And here I am at the end of the row. I've got two stitches left here. So for these last two stitches, I'm going to insert the hook, pull up a loop, insert the hook into the next stitch, pull up a loop, and then yarn over and pull through all three loops on the hook. And I'll chain one and turn. We're gonna do that same decrease again for row number 18. So insert the hook into the first stitch, pull up a loop, insert the hook into the second stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through all three loops. Then we're at a chain one space, so I'm just gonna single crochet into the chain one space and then continue the pattern. Chain one, skip one, single crochet, chain one, skip one, single crochet until the end of the row. And here we are at the end of the row. I'm gonna do my last stitches together single crochet two together, then chain one and turn. We're gonna continue this exact same decrease all the way up to row number 22. So I'm doing row number 19 right now. I am going to repeat this all the way up to row number 22. I'm just gonna zoom through it though because it's the same decrease. All right, here I am at the end of row number 22. You can see our taper looks beautiful. What I'm going to do now is I am going to chain a bunch of stitches to create a little loop that will hook over a button to close this bag. So I'm going to chain 30 stitches. One, two, 29, and 30. And now I've got these 30 stitches. I'm gonna connect it again with a slip stitch at the end of this row. Just like that. Then I'll chain one and turn. And now I'm going to single crochet 
30 times into this hole, just to thicken up that chain a bit. So I'm just gonna insert the hook underneath that whole chain and complete a single crochet just like that. And I'm gonna do 30 of them. Two, three, 29, and 30. Now I'm going to connect at the beginning of that row with a slip stitch. Now you can see we've got a little bit of a thicker connector here at the end. And now I'm going to go around the entire top of the bag in single crochets. So I'm going to single crochet down this line, single crochet down this line, then I will, how will I get across? I guess I'll use this, this seam here and I'll single crochet across here, then I'll single crochet across here, across this, up and up. And that is going to just sort of finish off the bag in a really pretty sort of clean way. And I'm just gonna put one single crochet everywhere that I can fit it down the rows. So one single crochet per row all the way down and all the way around. So I made it back to the beginning with my single crochets and I'm gonna do one more round here, but I'm gonna do it in the dark brown. So just to finish it off, I'm gonna do a round with just slip stitches. So first I'm going to finish my row or my round rather with my final single crochet here, but I'm gonna break my yarn and I'm going to finish the single crochet with the brown yarn. Just like that. Maybe I'll do one more round of single crochets. I think I'll do one more round of single crochets first. So I'm gonna do one round of single crochets with the dark brown. And then after that one round of single crochets, I'm gonna do a second round, but just slip stitches. So I'm gonna single crochet in every stitch from the previous round, just one stitch in each stitch. All right, I made it all the way around with my single crochets. Now I'm going to do my final round in slip stitches. You know what though? I think I might grab the gold thread to add with these. Well, scratch that, I ran out of gold floss. So we're just gonna do a round of slip stitches. And that's just gonna create a really nice finish on the edge of the bag. So I made it back to the beginning of my round. I'm gonna finish my round here with a slip stitch. And then I'm gonna chain one, break off my yarn, pull through that final loop, and then I'm gonna weave in that last tail. All right, here we go. Now we've got the top part of the bag finished. We've got this big space here for adding a button so that we can use this to close the bag. All right, so I've had this button for a while. It was a gift, a lovely gift that I've been holding onto waiting to use for a special occasion. And it has this beautiful, little daisy. I imagine that it's chamomile. I know it looks like a daisy, but to me it's chamomile. And I think the yellow that's on there makes it perfect for this little bumblebee bag, because what do bumblebees love more than flowers? Nothing. So I'm gonna break that thread, wind it around, and now we've got a button. Ta-da! Now our bag closes. Oh, that works. And that's kind of fun. Gives it a bit of a bumblebee stripey appearance. And we just pretend it was all intentional. There we go. Now I can use my cute little special button with this bumblebee themed bag. Now I'm just going to trim up my ends. Oh my gosh, how cute is this? Very pretty. All right. So let's wrap this up. So friends, here's the final bag. Let me just put my things away so I can show you just the bag. <laughs> you don't have to concentrate on all this mess. Ta-da! And here it is with a perfect little button closure. Oh, there's an end. Now, ta-da, ta-da! Here it is, the final bag. It's the bumblebee bag. What do you think? It's a little satchel with a flap on top. It's got enough room in it to hold your cell phone or your wallet. You can see here's a an iPhone for for size. Uh, I think the button adds a cute little pop of color, which is great. I like the twisted straps. They're more secure this way, and it kind of gives that bumblebee vibe. I think the yellow, brown, and dark brown really gives a cute sort of summer foraging bag energy. What do you think? 
The long strap is also perfect because it goes across the body with lots of room, so it sits about the hip. I'll include some outro footage right here so you can see what it looks like on, but it can hold a good amount of stuff. It's got a really good strength to it. Since we used that linen stitch, we've got a really beautiful texture, and the decreases around the flap of the bag gives it kind of a mailbag sort of energy. And since we did that one row of back loop only single crochet, the flap actually sits flat on the bag. So even if you don't have it done up, the flap isn't gonna just sort of fall the other way. It naturally wants to sit this way because we've created a bit of a seam right here. I think these stripes came out so cute and this is all naturally dyed yarn. We dyed this yarn in a previous video, check that out up here, but we dyed that in a previous video all with onion skins. Isn't that insane that you can get such a dark brown, a beautiful army green, and then a golden sunshine yellow all from onion skins. I gotta say, this is gonna be my bag for this summer, and I really hope that you make one too. Let me know what you think in the comments down below, and if you liked it, don't forget to leave a thumbs up on the video. It really helps the channel, and I would really appreciate it. That's pretty much it for today, but before we go, I do want to say thank you so much to my patrons. You guys are awesome. Here is the list of my patrons for this month. Thank you so much for subscribing and supporting me on there, and I hope you enjoy your seeds for your flower gardens this year. If you'd like to join my Patreon, check out the links in the description down below. You'll be supporting the channel, but you'll also get some cool stuff too, like access to our private Discord, early access to videos, and in the spring, I send out seeds. If that sounds cool, check it out. Anyway, friends, that is all I've got for you today. I really hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you next week. Bye! How do you like my new bag? Very nice. Yeah. It can hold all kinds of things, like... I got some, I got some important stuff in here. I found this. This is good. You can hold that. It can hold, it can hold moss. It can also hold, oh, what else did I get in here today? Some seeds. I don't have any rocks in here today though. <laughs> okay, that's all. I just wanted to show off my food.